GOP leaders are calling out Mexico's president for not taking any responsibility for his country's role in producing fentanyl. Their president blaming the overdose crisis in the U.S. on social decay in American society. Now, this despite massive amounts of evidence that Mexico is responsible for the problem. Fentanyl overdoses have become the leading cause of death for people 18 to 45 years old. Now, the drugs are making their way into America, mainly from Mexico via China for sending their ingredients to Mexico. And joining me now to talk more about this is Derek Maltz, former DA Special Operations Director. Derek, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Stella. Good to see you. Your reaction to what Mexico's president said? I mean, pretty shocking there, not taking any responsibility. Not really shocked, but what's really disturbing is that not even a month ago, on February 14th, there was what they reported as the largest fentanyl lab seizure ever in Mexico, and President AMLO made statements about how significant it was. So now you look, now he's saying they don't even manufacture fentanyl, so he's lying. But our own politicians are lying as well. I mean, DHS Secretary Mayorkas is telling America that the border is closed, that they have operational control of the border. Bottom line is, we need this president in our country to look out for the American kids first, declare this a public health and national security emergency, and go after the cartels and stop relying on soft on crime and corrupt leaders in Mexico to save our kids. So, uh, Derek, so what should our administration do? Should they label the cartels terrorist organizations go and go in and bomb their labs? Good question. So my position is, because I've been in the Beltway and I see the bureaucracy, they're pushing back on this word terrorist. Mm -hmm. Even though the cartels have killed more Americans than ISIS, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda together. But here's the thing. I don't care what they call them. You could call them drug cartels, you could call them Mexican drug traffickers, transnational criminals, or narco terrorists, but we need to actually make them feel the pain and be held accountable for what they're doing, and that's destroying our future generation. Right now, we have you know, a couple of congressmen that are pushing forward a bill to use you know, the military assets to destroy those labs. I'm a proponent of decimating those labs because they're killing our kids. I'm also a proponent of accountability and rule of law. Those cartels are operating like terrorists, so I believe that that's the way to go. But if there's so much pushback from the politicians, let's just go down there, offer the Mexican support. If they don't want the support, then we got to look out for our kids first. You can't have over 100,000 Americans dying every year. That's unacceptable. An American public should be outraged. This isn't a blue or a red issue. It's a red, white, and blue issue. Yeah. Everyone needs to care. It, it's an American problem, that is for sure. Derek, how much profits are the cartels actually making, and how much of the deadly drug is actually being intercepted? Great question. So let me give you a real example. In Los Angeles last week, there was one million pills seized by DEA, Hawthorne Police Department, and others. Those pills were being sold for 75 cents a pill to the DEA undercover agent and informant. Now, it only takes like 15 cents to make a pill. So think about the profit, because these pills can sell for 10, 20, 30, 40, even up to $140 on an Indian reservation in Montana. So there's billions of profit being made on these pills and the other drugs. But in regards to what is actually being seized, I my hat goes off to law enforcement CBP seized over 14.7 thousand pounds last year of fentanyl at the border. The DEA seized over 57 million fake pills last year, along with 13,000 pounds. But the experts that have looked at this for years say it's about 10 percent, if yeah. that, that we're actually seizing. So 90 percent so, is making its way into the United States and killing Americans. Our kids are dying. You, you keep saying that, you know, it's, it's about our children. It's about the Americans who are dying. Should there be more education about this deadly drug? Is there wow, enough another being great done? Question. Stella, great question, because that's what I testified to. And I'm really upset because I asked the president if he would have a meeting in the White House to get professional athletes, role models, you know, celebrities, social media influences in there, because here's why, Stella. The kids are not watching mainstream media, cable news. They're not listening to congressional hearings. They're looking at the social media devices and watching reels. So if these famous celebrities and athletes would put stuff out there, maybe we'd educate the kids.
Because right now, the Department of Education is sleeping. We're not getting any, you know, anything. There's no PSAs even. I haven't seen any PSAs. And even if they had them, they'd be on national, you know, TV that kids aren't watching. we got to get to the kids. And it's totally incompetence. And it's a disaster right now. We can't get accurate stats from CDC. We can't get education from the White House or the or the uh, Department of Education. So we need private citizens. That's why the families that I work with, it's like an army now in America where they're out there doing their own education, their own school, um, you know, briefings and stuff. They're putting up billboards. They're putting up, you know, different, you know, events around the country just to let people know what's going on. That's where I have a major problem with the government right now, putting aside all politics, putting aside the border, the things they can be doing, they're not doing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's about saving American lives, and the status quo obviously is not working. Derek Maltz, former DA Special Operations Director, thank you as always. Thank you. Good to see you. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.